Part 2. Create an air of mystery. In a world growing increasingly banal and familiar, what seems enigmatic instantly draws attention. Never make it too clear what you are doing or about to do. Do not show all your cards. An air of mystery heightens your presence, but also creates anticipation. Everyone will be watching you to see what happens next. Use mystery to beguile, seduce, and even frighten. Observance of the law. So in, in 1905, so not even that long ago, so in 1905, only about a hundred years ago, there was a rumor that spread through our palace of a young oriental girl who danced in private homes. She was very exotic, she wrapped herself in veils, she was from another country, and a local journalist had seen her dancing. He reported a woman from the far race had come to Europe laden with perfume and jewels to introduce some of her richness of oriental colour and life into the satired society of European cities. Soon everyone knew the dancer's name, Mata Hari. But she would only perform in very small, select, private audiences. She wore alluring clothes covered in jewels. She danced in a way that was alluring and trance-like. She told her audiences that her dances were from stories on Indian mythology and Javanese folk tales. And everybody wanted to know more about her. You know, she told journalists she was Dutch, she'd grown up in Java. She talked about time spending in India and other countries. You know, how she learned sacred dances and how, and pretty much to exemplify how exotic she was. You know, a few people actually seen her dance, but everybody knew who she was. And everybody started conjuring up all types of images of her. You know, they compared her to an Indian goddess. Whatever their imagination wanted to see in this mysterious woman, it saw. She later performed for the first time in public. And she'd now become like a cult figure. She spawned imitations. And soon enough, you know, her dances spread beyond Paris. You know, she was invited to Berlin, Vienna, Milan. And over the next few years, she performed in all over Europe. She earned an income like no other for someone her age and gender. But near the end of World War I, she was arrested in France tried, convicted, and executed as a German spy. Only during the trial did the truth come out. Meta Hari wasn't from Java or India. She hadn't grown up in the Orient. She did not have a drop of Eastern blood in her. Her real name was Margaretha Zelli, and she came from Holland. That is all she was. How did she come about this, though? Interpretation. Margaretha learned to dance while she was traveling with her family in Java. She's not from there, but she observed them and copied their behaviors. She wasn't unlike many of the other thousands of beautiful girls who landed in Paris every year, but she, she was ambitious and she wanted to create something for herself, so she did. What attracted people to her, held people's attention and made her famous wealthy was her mystery. People are enthralled by mystery because it invites constant interpretation and never tire of it. The mysterious cannot be grasped and what cannot be seized and consumed creates power. Now I believe where she messed up was going public. She took it too far. She seemed to abuse her power and mystery she had created herself and put herself in a dangerous situation. She didn't perform privately anymore. She was performing for the public. She courted too much attention to herself. Too many thousands and millions of people knew her name that she was eventually executed. She wasn't a spy, but that's what they thought. Keys to power. That is the power of being mysterious. It invites layers of interpretation, excites our imagination, and seduces us into believing that it conceals something marvelous. The world has become so familiar, and its inhabitants so predictable, that what wraps itself in mystery will almost always draw the limelight to it and make us watch it. Do not imagine that to create an air of mystery you have to be grand and awe-inspiring. Mystery that is woven into your day-to-day -day demeanor and is subtle has much more power to fascinate and attract attention. If you want a real-life example, then I have one, and that is me. I have been described by certain people in that way, and they use the word mysterious, and they used other words to describe me, and I didn't understand it at the time. I didn't understand how I was coming across with this demeanor, with this like mysterious demeanor. But then I realized why. I remained stoic. So when the times those people described me as mysterious, I remember back and think, what was I doing? What was my behavior? Well, I was stoic, so I wasn't showing emotion. By appearing stoic and emotionless, I appeared mysterious. Humans are emotional creatures. And to appear the opposite of the norm created 
I guess, an illusion of difference. An illusion and perception of curiosity. I did not try this on purpose. It was just my natural behavior. But that is one, one thing to try. And this is a perfect reason why. Remember, most people are upfront, can be read like an open book, take a little care to control their words or image, and are hopelessly predictable by simply holding back, keeping silent, occasionally uttering ambiguous phrases, and deliberately appearing inconsistent, acting odd in the subtlest of ways, you will emanate an aura of mystery. The people around you will then magnify that aura by constantly trying to interpret you. And that is what I believe I was imitating in some ways, without even knowing it. I hadn't read this book before I did it. It was a natural behavior. But, a lot of people don't do that naturally, so you can take that and experiment with it. But it's a, it's a problem. Some people in certain positions cannot do this. You know, there's certain social positions which prevent you from completely wrapping your actions in mystery. You must learn to make yourself less obvious. Every now and then, act in a way that does not mesh with other people's perception of you. This way, you keep those around you on defensive, electing the kind of attention that makes you powerful. Done right, the creation of enigma can also draw the kind of attention that strikes terror into your enemy. If you find yourself trapped, cornered, and on the defensive in some situation, try a simple experiment. Do something that cannot be easily explained or interpreted. Choose a simple action, but carry it out in a way that unsettles your opponent. A way with many possible interpretations, making your intentions obscure. So it's kind of it's kind of uh, having the effect of being random with your behavior but don't be randomly random be purposefully random be consciously random plan the action you're taking and note its result on the person image the dance of the veils the veils envelop the dancer what they reveal causes excitement what they conceal heightens interest the essence of mystery reversal an air of mystery works wonders for those who need to develop an aura of power and get themselves noticed, but, but it must seem measured and under control. Maida Harry went too far with her fabrications. Although the accusation that she was a spy was false at the time, it was a reasonable pres presumption because all her lies made her seem suspicious and nefarious. Do not let your air of mystery be slowly transformed into a reputation for deceit. That's exactly what I said before. Maida Harry, she went too far. Control the deceit you illustrate to people as to not go too far. Don't get caught up and forget who you really are. Man, I should be a poet. That was fucking great. The attention you attract must never offend or challenge the reputation of those above you. Not at any rate if they are secure. And that comes back to the very first law of the book. Never outshine the master. But never appear overly greedy for attention, for it signals insecurity, and insecurity drives power away. Understand that there are times when it is not in your interest to be the center of attention. 